Hello fellow brothers, I'm Kairos Time, and it is time to dive into the balance changes that happened yesterday. Now I'm going to be offering more depth into how these balance changes will actually impact the meta, and then I'll also be providing my own opinion on the changes as well as some additional changes that I would like to see. Of course, make sure you subscribe so you do not miss out on version... And of course, guys, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss version 13 of the tier list, which will be coming as soon as me and the tier list collaborators have uh, figured out determining which brawlers are the best now that the meta is changing, finally. Starting off, let's talk about Bo. He is getting an increase in his main attack damage from 700 to 728 at max level. That is a 4% buff to his attack, and uh, it's basically to make it so that one less arrow is required to take out four of the 26 brawlers in the game, which really just is not a big change, but that's not the only buff that he's getting. He's also going to now require one less arrow in order for him to charge up his super, which is going from 11 arrows to 10 arrows, but once again, that's not really a very big change because it will still require four complete attacks, um, so I don't think that it will actually change too much. The changes aren't very game-changing, but Bo is certainly a more high skill cap brawler, and I think that people that like already know how to play Bo, or people that are willing to now try and give him a shot, will... Uh, They'll, they'll be a little bit more able to, to pull him off really, really well, but uh, he certainly will not be taking over the meta. Next, we have Dynamite, who is getting a super damage buff by 10%. It's going from 2,800 to 3,080 at max level. This is a really substantial buff to Dynamite's super. I think that the biggest issue with Dynamite right now is that Barley is just so much better at controlling the field that the extra damage that you get by playing Dynamite just isn't really worth it because it's not actually that much more extra damage. Overall, I don't think that this uh, this buff will make Dynamite a very obvious pick, but it will make him stronger when you actually do decide to play with him. I think that I'd like stronger attacks from from Dynamite in order to justify his lack of control. Because Barley, he can control from a distance, he can control close up to him. Dynamite is really weak up close to him, and it's actually not too difficult to dodge his shots from distance. So. I don't know, we'll see. Next we have Rico. He's getting a 7% damage buff for both his attack and his super, going from 420 to 448 per hit at max level. And this actually means that it will require one less bullet for him to take out 17 of the 26 brawlers. And, and that's actually pretty big, but the biggest interaction change will actually be with Jesse, Leon, Penny, and Terra, who will all be able to now be taken out in two complete shots from Rico, as opposed to the three complete attacks before. Now additionally, Rico's star power is getting a 25% buff, meaning that the additional damage from bouncing shots off the wall is going from 80 to 100 additional damage. Now where a lot of star powers are getting tweaks and changes, this 25% buff is actually like, it's actually like really significant. Overall, I don't think that we'll be seeing Rico a ton more in most trophy ranges, but I do think that he'll be seen a lot more frequently at higher trophy levels where people have actually like learned to master his bounce shots. That said, if you've struggled with, R with Rico in the past, now would be a great time for you guys to go and try learning those bounce, bounce shots and trying to use him because he's going to be a lot stronger and offer a lot more control than he used to. Next we have Mortis where his main attack reload time is going from 2.5 seconds down to 2.4 seconds, which is a 4% buff to that reload speed. Overall. I really don't think that this is very much. It will obviously help him, but with tankier close range brawlers like Rosa and BB being introduced into the game, Mortis is going to be faced up against more and more of his counters. And uh, I will say that Mortis has been like, he's kind of been like a really tricky brawler to balance in the past. Like one small tweak can make him like incredibly overpower and then one small tweak in the opposite direction will make him feel like a mushy potato. Um, yeah, you don't want to be a mushy potato. So Supercell's being really cautious here, but I still think that I would like to see him get a bit of a stronger buff. Maybe a little bit more damage, maybe maybe a little bit more health. Something, something to help make him feel a little bit uh, better to play. And next we have Shelly, where her star power is actually being buffed to last 20% longer from 2.5 seconds to 3 seconds when somebody gets hit by it, it'll actually be slowed down a little bit. Now I really love this change to Shelly. She's traditionally been like a, a super strong brawler in lower trophies before people learn how to deal with her. And then later on, she like she quickly dies off. She, she, she's considered one of the worst brawlers in the game at higher trophies. And uh, by buffing her star power, this should make it so that she she's the same, lower trophy ranges, but she'll be able, she'll be able to offer a little bit more control um, in the higher trophy areas where she'll be able to actually compete in the ladder. I'm really excited about this change with Shelly. I mean, I'm anxious to see how it will impact things. Next, we have Penny. <laughs> 
Our star power is getting reworked. It now targets clo <laughs> all six of the balls, or the cannonballs, <laughs> will... <laughs> oh my gosh, it's ridiculous. It will target the same brawler. All six of them will go firing off, chasing the enemy brawler, instead of randomly shooting off everywhere. I really like getting rid of randomness in... Uh, with these types of things and this is going to be a big game changer for Penny. You can still run away from it if you're running in the straight direction, but if you happen to lag for some reason or you like accidentally move the wrong way, you will be blasted in the face with six cannonballs that will each deal 1,680 damage, <laughs> which is nuts. Plus the range is like ridiculously long, so you have to be really wary whenever you're taking out her turret. And that is not all guys, if you place her turret close to a siege Ike or a heist safe when her turret gets taken out, all six cannonballs will land on the Ike turret or the safe dealing an insane 10,080 damage, <laughs> which means all you would need to win is a siege or heist is four penny turrets. Four penny turrets, that is absolutely nuts. And I think that this was just like a small oversight on Supercell's part. I don't think that they had like, wait, they thought. I, I think they were like, okay, let's get all these balance changes done. We want to put this out as quickly as we possibly can. And they just happened to not think about how it would impact the, the, tur the turrets. And uh, I think it's really hilarious. I would not be surprised if they were to nerf it like really quickly. I, I don't think they'll let this last for very long. In fact, by the time you watch this video, they may have already tweaked it. It would be really easy for them to nerf it so that her star power only shoots out two or three can cannonballs instead of six. And um, even then it would still be pretty strong. <laughs> it's hilarious. It's hilarious. Next we have Frank, his star power damage bonus is being increased from 40% extra damage to 50% extra damage. This means that a star power attack after taking somebody out is going from 2,352 damage to 2,520 damage with a single attack. And the duration of Frank actually going in that enrage mode is being buffed by 20% to last for 12 long seconds. I definitely think that this will make Frank more viable in higher trophy ranges. 12 seconds is a super long time, and I previously felt as though like he rarely got to utilize his star power, because there's just like a small chance that he would actually get a kill, and then also be able to attack somebody that was close enough to him. Typically, if you see a Frank killing somebody, he has that stun, so he run they they're able to run away really easily. Um, I, I still think that it's not going to be super easy for Frank to pull this off, but it will certainly be easier than it was before, and in the hands of the right player, going on a super long raging rampage will be a, a more frequent occurrence with Frank. Next we have Carl getting a 9% damage nerf to his regular attack from 896 to 812 every time his hat axe hits a target at max range or his pickaxe or or his wrench or whatever it is. Now 9% does not sound like a ton, but this is this nerf actually changes a lot of Carl's interactions with other brawlers. 20 of the 26 brawlers will now require one more hit for Carl to take them out. And several of the brawlers will actually require a full attack more in order to get taken out. Now that's including Barley, Bo, Crow, Jean, Mortis, Nita, Piper, Poco, Rosa, Shelly, and Spike. Now, if that is not enough, his star power is getting a 19% nerf in how much faster it actually makes Carl's attack move faster, you know? The change is from 16% faster down to 13% faster when he has his star power. Carl was arguably the strongest brawler in the game before these balance changes, especially at high trophy matches. I definitely think he needed these nerfs. I still think that he'll be really a strong brawler because his mechanics are like really solid, but I don't think that he'll quite be the terror that he was before. He might even at this point be like a little bit on the lower end. I don't know, we'll see. Gene is having his super range nerfed by 15% from nine tiles down to 7.66 tiles. Now before the nerf, Gene had the seventh longest reaching super in the game. After the nerf, Gene has the 13th longest reaching super in the game. So that one and one third tile range really actually has a huge impact on things. Additionally, when Gene pulls an enemy, it will interrupt their healing process for them. So like that's actually a slight buff to Gene. Before basically what would happen is Gene would be able to kill somebody because they have an X amount of health, but they would actually start healing on the way to Gene as he was pulling them, and then they would have they would require an additional hit, and maybe Gene wouldn't have that hit, and so that would result in a loss for Gene. The problem with Gene before is that you literally had to stay a ridiculous distance away from him just because 
You couldn't escape a well-aimed super. In gem grab particularly, or, and also like Brawl Ball, this meant that Gene was the king of every single match. This should really tone him down a bit, but I personally still think he's going to be a very solid option in gem grab. The fact that he can pull through walls is just in it's incredibly strong. He still even may be overpowered after, after the balance changes. We'll see. Rosa is getting an attack damage nerf of 4%. She's, she's going from 672 to 644 at max level with every little like hit. Um, now this means she'll require one more hit in order to take out 15 of the 26 brawlers, but more significantly, she'll require one more complete attack to take out BB, Brock, Colt, Daryl, Dynamite, and Pam. Additionally, Rosa will now require one more hit in order for her to fully charge her super, which is a 10% nerf to her super charge rate. Now that said, she's still going to require four complete attacks for her to take out, uh, to charge up her super, so I don't think it will be a, a huge nerf. But with these two nerfs together, Rosa's getting closer and closer to being balanced. She'll offer less DPS, she won't be able to use, to use her super as frequently. We'll see what happens, but for now I think I'm gonna call Rosa balanced as all things should be. Next is BB with her health being buffed by 5% from 5880 to 6160 at max level. This is barely enough for moving her to from like having the seventh highest health in the game tied with Daryl to now tying with Carl for having the sixth highest health in the game. Now this is not a massive change, but it does mean that she will survive one more complete attack from El Primo, Pam, Penny, Rosa, and Spike. Now her star power speed boost is being lowered from 19% uh, movement boost to 15%. Now let me give you a little bit of perspective on this. Before, BB had the fastest walk speed out of all the brawlers in the game. Now, that's excluding brawlers like Leon or Carl that are able to move faster when they're using their super, or like Daryl who can roll really fast, or Bull, you guys get the idea. She was actually 12% faster than Crow, who previously had the fastest walk movement speed in the game. After her nerf, BB will still be 9% faster than Crow, which is super fast. This is total a 20% nerf, uh, which will tone her star power down just a little bit. She still has the fastest walk speed with her star power, but her star power offered way more value than Colt's or Leon's star power, so I think it's pretty fair. On top of that, BB will no longer consume her home run bar when she has, like, you know, uses her super to kick the ball and brawl ball. Overall, I think the Supercell did the right thing in buffing her base stats and nerfing her star power. Personally, I think that her knockback should be nerfed from, or, or buffed, or whatever. Be changed from four tiles down to three and one-thirds tiles, because while that is a buff, while that's a, a strength to her, uh, more times than not, it actually means uh, it's a little bit of a weakness because she can't finish brawlers off. Now, this should give BB a little bit more of a chance to stop shine, and I'm excited to see how this impacts her in the meta. Next, we have Daryl. His health is being buffed by, by 10%. At max level, he's going from 5,880 to 6,440, which is a big change. He's going from having the seventh highest HP in the game to having the fifth highest. Now this means that he's going to survive one more complete attack by Brock, Crow, Dynamite, El Primo, Daryl, Rosa, Mortis, Nita, Pam, Penny, Shelly, Terra, and Spike. Along with that health buff is actually a 25% nerf to his star power from shielding 40% damage down to 30% damage when he's maxed out. I love these two changes together. In my opinion, Daryl was a pretty awful option without his star power, and only a decent option with his star power. He was okay, he was good. Now, I think he's going to be an okay option with and without his star power. You will be able to play with him, and he might even be slightly on the strong side, since 6.4 thousand HP really is a is a nice chunk of health. Okay guys, now we have covered these balance changes and I wanted to talk a little bit about how they will impact this meta. Now at this point, I'm mostly speculating, it's, it's educated speculation, but I will be revamping the tier list collaboration group to bring you the updated version of the tier list as soon as I possibly can. Now for starters, I really like these balance changes. It has been a while since we've had a long list of balance changes and I'm really excited to see how it, it will impact things. Now in the last tier list, Carl, Rosa, and Jean were the best brawlers in the game by a long shot. <laughs> you saw them everywhere, it was ridiculous. I'm obviously glad that they got some decent nerfs, but I still think they'll be strong options. Jean's will st Jean will still be a very solid option in gem grab and brawl ball, but his viability will decrease a bit in bounty because of that extra range nerf from his super. I think that Rosa's going to stay good everywhere, but she'll just be less good. Uh, and Carl, 
I think that he'll be much more balanced because there are a lot of interactions with Carl where he'll just like be the less of an advantage than he used to have. After those three brawlers were Brock and Barley. Interesting enough, Piper and Dynamite were on the very low end of the tier list and I would consider them to be counterparts to Brock and Barley. I think the big reason for this is that Brock is just more well-rounded than Piper and Barley offered so much more control than Dynamite did. Dynamite did get a buff, though I, I don't think it was quite strong enough. Um, but Piper did not get touched. I think that Brock will continue being the long-range brawler of choice unless Supercell actually increases Piper's damage uh, close up to her or if they nerf Brock's overall damage. Now the four lowest brawlers in the tier list were Terra, Shelly, Poco, and Jesse. I'm okay with Jesse being where she's at right now since she was part of the last OP meta. Um, but Shelly did get a decently sized buff to her star power, which is, I think, is, like I said, exactly what I think she needs. But neither Terra nor Poco actually got touched, which I find rather unfortunate. Poco has been outshined by Pam for the longest time. It's been so long, and I think that he could really use a damage buff to make him more viable in more situations. I also think his star power needs a bit of a buff since it's a pretty risky thing to use his attack his only slight offense for defense instead of that offense. Additionally, Terra could use some more damage from her regular attack, and I think that that would be justified because she has a really slow reload speed and a super that takes forever for her to charge up. At least until her star power is nerfed, I think that Penny will be ridiculously OP. She's especially in Siege or Heist. It's hilarious. I, I I'm, I'm seriously thought that was so funny. As soon as I saw a clip where... <laughs> I was dying. I think that Frank will start to become a little bit more strong option. I do not think that we will see Mortis a whole lot more than before his buff, but I do think that his counterpart, Daryl, the other assassin, um, I think we'll see Daryl a little bit more, as, you know, and he'll be more of the assassin than than uh, Mortis would be because he has that massive HP buff. It was, it was great for him. Now, aside from these changes that I listed, I think that most everything else will stay the same. Maybe Rico will see a little bit more, at least competitively. I'm really curious to know what you guys think about these changes and whether or not, like, what's your in your first gut thought, thought? Like, what do you think needs to still be changed after this point? And of course, guys, don't forget to subscribe so you do not miss version 13 of the tier list coming up here, hopefully pretty soon. For now, this is Kairos Time ticking by, and we will see you in Brawl Stars.